I'm Stuart Binns. Um, I live in Somerset um, with my wife Lucy and my boys Charlie and Jack. Um, we live a, um, a nice life, an idyllic life down there, well away from the pressures of London, uh, a decision we took about six years ago and uh, we've not regretted it. I divide my life into three parts. I still make television programs, which is where I spent most of my professional career, um, but I've started writing books. So the second part of my life involves writing. I write historical novels. Uh, two years ago, I was lucky enough to get a publishing deal with Penguin. So my first book was called Conquest, uh, set around the Battle of Hastings, 1066. I then wrote a sequel called Crusade, which was published this year. And I'm working on my third, which is coming out next year, which is a sequel to the sequel. So, uh, and I enjoy writing. It's... Um, you, if you work in television, it's very much a team game. But writing books is a one-to-one -on, one -one relationship. It's you and the reader, and it's a very different thing. It's a much more personal thing, um, a new experience for me, and I really enjoy it. And then the third part of my life is I offer, on the basis of a, a fairly um, full and long life, I, I offer my experience and wisdom to, in, in various forms of consultancy. Um, through the work that I've done um, for various organizations, uh, I've, I've done a lot in what is conventionally called branding, rebranding, brand identity, marketing communications. Uh, and generally, I try and help uh, companies which are starting afresh or trying to re, to re identify themselves, trying to find a new path, trying to find new markets. And I help them tell their story, uh, I help them articulate what they can do. Um, and I do that in a number, number of ways. Sometimes it can be in my core area, in making television, uh, making promotional films for them, and sometimes doing some copywriting uh, and identifying what their story is so that they can, they can tell it. The areas where I think I can help are obviously connected with um, the three parts of the work that I currently do. Um, Obviously, anything to do with the media and with production, uh, with television, with storytelling, uh, either in conventional media or in new media, is, is an area where I've got lots of experience. People trying to break into that industry, treat, people trying to identify what the skills are to get into the media in general. That's, I think, something I can help with. And indeed, it's been part of my life uh, in running production teams to, to help people who want, you know, have come through my teams and have gone on to work in the industry. Anything to do with the media, uh, but also now in terms of the writing that I do, I've always thought the written word is crucial to lots of different things in life, not just in storytelling, but in life in general. Um, the written word is, is vital. The, the ability to communicate is, is so important. And it's not just a matter of putting words on paper, it's a matter of the discipline, a matter of getting your thoughts together, and a matter of deciding what it is that you want to say before you actually put words on paper. So communication skills and the power of the word and the ability to express oneself coherently um, are things that I've always specialised in. I always insisted in programme making, for example, that uh, producers never used scriptwriters. They always wrote, wrote their own things. Because I think it's vital if you're going to work in the media in any form, you've got to be able to use words yourself. And if you're not very good at words, you just have to try and master it. So I, I do courses. I do help people who want to be writers. I, I help people who want to write novels. I help people who want to write screenplays. I help people who want to be copywriters. Those are all things that I've, that I've, that I've done. Uh, and, you know, I think I've got some techniques to help people get said what they want to say. Um, because, <clears throat> on the whole, I find that if somebody comes to you for help because they want to say something, then that automatically means that they're worth helping. Because if they haven't got anything to say, they wouldn't be there. So they've got something to say. So um, I think it's my job to help them get it, get it said, get it said coherently, get it down on paper get it down on paper in a way that um, you know, other people can read. Because, of course, it's one thing to have a story in one's head. It's, it's one thing to tell a story verbally, 
uh, it's another to put it down on paper so that it can be read at a distance coherently in the way you want it to be read. That's all about technique. Um, and I think there's a big difference between um, the intuitive skills of storytelling and having a story to tell and creating the mechanism by which it can be told on paper. Because, because those are all... It's like draftsmanship in drawing. You know, you can have an image in your head and you can, you know, be desperate to create that image on paper with a pencil. But doing it is a matter of draftsmanship. It's, a, it's an actual f physical skill. And writing coherently is also a skill, not necessarily a physical skill, but the techniques are, are similar in that there are certain fundamentals that you have to learn, certain, certain things that you have to practice over and over again in order to get that right. So all forms of written communication are, is an area that I think um, I can help. And the third area is a sort of very generic area to do with, based on experience and wisdom, about uh, managing a team, um, about leadership, about how to deal with problems, um, how, to, how a company can tell a story, for example, how you can develop a corporate communication strategy, how you can do a brand analysis, uh, how you can rebrand yourself, how you can identify what your brand is. So there's a whole range of skills in what I suppose is business and commerce, which I've adapted, as it were, from my life experience. Although I've been involved in a creative industry, um, the industry that I've been involved in have been corporate structures themselves. They've been built on you know, the need for financial um, thoroughness, the need for uh, proper management structures. And so, and I've been involved in all that and have acquired the wisdom of how those things work. Um, managing a team of creative people isn't easy. Um, and you, it's not just a matter of saying, well, you know, you're, I'm creative, you're creative, let's all be creative together. It's a management question like in any other sphere. You know, that everyone's got their strengths and weaknesses, uh, and everyone, you know, people need encouragement, they, they need to be told when things are not going very well, when they're not performing properly, and so on. It's the same, uh, and, and I think the, the best way to become a good manager is based on experience. You know, making the mistakes, learning from the mistakes, knowing when you get things right. And if you, if you have the benefit of meeting someone who's been around the block a couple of times, it can be really, really helpful. I've been very fortunate. Um, I've enjoyed lots of different uh, experiences and I've had some success. I, I was a good academic. Um, I played good standard sport. Um, I went in the army, had a good time, uh, managed to um, do reasonably well in a, in a fairly uh, demanding regiment. Uh, and I was a good school teacher. Uh, I got on well with the kids, the kids liked me. Um, they knew they had to do as they were told. And when I said jump, they jumped, uh, but we got on well. Um, I enjoyed that. But I suppose the greatest success in my life came later. Uh, I think I was a late developer. Um, I was very fortunate to be in the right place at the right time and get uh, an opportunity at the BBC uh, to walk right into documentary features. Again, a stroke of very, uh, very great fortune. And then again, um, when I left the BBC and I went to IMG, to have been in the position to launch Transworld Sport, which has become quietly legendary. I sort of contradiction in terms, but people who know Transworld Sport are very fond of it, and um, you know, I meet lots of people who spend their, who used to spend their Saturday mornings recovering from their hangover watching Transworld Sport. So to have launched that and to have looked after it for, the, for its first 10 years was a real privilege. Um, and that, and working at IMG got me to go to lots of places and meet lots of people. Uh, you know, to have interviewed Arnold Palmer, Jean Claude Killy, Don Bradman, Muhammad Ali, Tiger Woods, to have done all those things and to have been to Open Championships and World Championship fights and to the Masters and to World Cup finals and to the Olympic Games. You know, how lucky can you get to have a, a job like that in life? I think the most rewarding thing for me in life, and fortunately for me, Life and work are the same thing. I have worked, as, a, as it were, I have worked for a living from time to time, but when I have, I've tried to stop. Because if, you, if you're really fortunate, 
I think you you can do something where you you don't see the join between work and life, where the two things blend together, and that's you know the most important thing if you can if you can manage it, where what you do where you love what you do, uh, and it doesn't seem like work. That's something a lot of people should aim for if they can get away with it. 